I do believe we're live. We are on. So, hello guys, gals, and non-binary pals, and welcome to the 710 Cast, a weekly stream where three furry gearheads talk all things cars, boats, trains, planes, and hopefully keep you entertained for an hour or so. My yes, name is Tamarack, the pi- my name is Tamarack, the pilot fox that hits airplanes with hammers, and I'm playing host this week. With me are my other two hosts, Eli the Coyote, who expertly patrols the wilds and sometimes sets them on fire for fun and profit. Say hello. Hello. And Kaji, our train-riding fox from down under, who knows all the fun facts about everything and somehow always takes us off the rails. Say hello. All the time. Every time. Real good at that. Every time. (laughs) And check us out. We have faces now. We're not just disembodied voices floating in the void. So thanks to Eli for working so hard on that yesterday. We light up and bounce around, and you can tell which one of us is doing what stupid thing. (laughs) <laughs> Great. The now there's yes, accountability. The time. Yeah, now we got to own up to our mess. <laughs> so, if you're watching this replay on YouTube, thanks for taking us for a spin. But if you'd like to join us live, we do this every week on Twitch, Sundays at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific, here in the U.S. at Twitch TV, twitch.tv slash the 710 cast. And what time is that in Australia time, Kaji? Unfortunately, it's very early. It's at about 11 o'clock in the morning on a Monday. So if you're trying to dodge work, it works perfectly. Just sit in the can for an hour. No one will notice. (laughs) Just just stealing time back. So links to the Twitch channel, Twitter, Discord, and the mailbag will be down in the description. We'd love to hear from you, so please drop us a line. Yeah, we're always interested in what you guys have to say to us, for us, about us, all that good in the mess. So, last week, we discussed some car commercials from big manufacturers and what made them either a flop or fondly remembered. Keeping with the theme of advertising, this week we'll be doing a bit of helpful consumer advice and talking about third-party used car listings. Tips you can use when you're shopping for your next project or daily driver so you can sift out the treasure from the trash. And quite importantly, (laughs) also stuff you can use when you're selling a car because, let's be honest, you want to grab people's attention. Absolutely. You want to put out the best edge you possibly can because the more eyes that look at it, the more they understand, the better they feel about it, the more likely you are to get somebody coming by and knocking on your door saying, hey, can I give you money? (laughs) Please take my money. Uh, We'll also have some news stories that caught our eye and near the end, we'll open it up for some questions if we get some folks in the live audience. But before we get to any of that, let's go around the table real quick and see what's been uh, up with everyone this week. Who wants to start? I'm nominating Kaji. Oh my god, why am I getting voluntold? (laughs) (laughs) Um, Well, actually, I do actually have some news this week. I managed to get one of my projects doing things. Tell us more. I know, it's amazing. Uh, I've got a 50cc two-stroke scooter. Yes, I know, the most manly car thing ever, uh, which I got for free off my neighbors. Uh, this week I have cleared out the carburetor, so it's actually getting some oil and fuel in there. Uh, gave it a, a bit of a spin, uh, moved some oil around the cylinder a little bit, charged up the battery, got a new key set in it so I can actually turn it on and off without hot wiring the thing, and, uh, it lives. Starts and runs. Just need to clean the plug because the plug was, uh, fouled anyway. Mm. Uh, so I took it out and I cleaned it and I put it back in and it immediately failed itself again. So I think the gap is incorrect. I'll be resetting it. Nice, nice. And yeah, it's funny. And runs just won't idle. Yeah. The funny thing about scooters too is one, I, I have no judgments whatsoever on scooters because that's, I learned how to ride on two wheels on a 150 CC scooter from China. So I have no, I have no mm. like ground to stand on there. But they are actually also a ton of fun. And it's one of the things I always hear people say is you always have the most fun possible on a scooter until somebody notices you having that much fun on a scooter. And then, you know, well, I don't know. They're What's more fun than they have about... to be. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Oh, what right, I thought was funny fun. about this one, though, I went looking for parts and I expected to find uh, maybe a top end kit considering it's a two stroke, maybe a drive belt, maybe like new mirrors for sale, right? Right. It turns out there's parts to make this thing into a racing scooter because it's popular for that in Italy. 
we have to watch this at some point. Absolutely. I mean, I'd say... Oh, it's nuts. Yeah, you have to do it because race car. <laughs> because like, race there's exhausts from Melosi, from Technogas. There's uh, complete top end kits to take it out to 70cc. There's one that has nine ports. <laughs> and quite apart from that, there's racing variators. There's racing torque drives. There's upgraded belts there's different variator weights and washers um oh if you don't know what those are at some point we'll talk about cvts because they're not just in scooters but uh we should yeah, do holy crap yeah <laughs> and how much they've improved absolutely but Oddly um enough, partly because of scooters <laughs> yeah so yeah, uh, next up next. Temerick? uh this one's been a little bit of a mixed bag for me uh, took the mighty MKZ in for service because I cannot be bothered to change my own oil. And turns <laughs> out paying someone else to do your brakes sometimes pays off. Uh, I had developed a bit of a front pulsation and they warranty it. So I've got brand new brakes for free. That's a solid W. Yeah, not, can't turn that down. Bad. So sometimes it doesn't pay to do it yourself. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, my bike is so British that it apparently got depressed over the passing of the Queen because it started acting up uh, with a weird uh, <laughs> cold start idle <laughs> and it hesitates from a standing stop so hard I almost dropped it in the middle of a turn because it cut out on me. Yeah, that was, that was bad. So uh, the shop is two weeks out for service, so I'm waiting to get it in there and hopefully it's not too expensive and hopefully this isn't foreshadowing. So that's my week. Oh, well, well, bike is morning when the queen dies. So, bike is red tagged out of service. Uh, only for the time being. And if all else fails and they kind of figure something out, and it's something you feel like you can dig into, hey, winter project. Yeah, maybe, but the riding season's not over, and that's I true. had nice, I had nice things planned for it, and now it's betraying me. It'll get over, Lizzie, soon. <laughs> <laughs> so, Yodi? Uh, I really don't have a whole lot to report, honestly. Um, probably the most recent thing that did happen is just because, you know, apartment life. You gotta love that. Uh, I don't really have the space, the time, or the tools to do my own oil, but one of my coworkers is very much like, oh, you need that done? Just come over on Monday afternoon sometime and we'll get it done. So... Took it over there, and we not only got the oil changed out on the Forerunner, so it is nice and happy. It was also just, I mean, I'm going to show a little bit of my shame here. It was about two quarts low. Oh. <clears throat> uh, so now it's much happier. Uh, it feels a heck of a lot better, but we also, we looked over everything else. We looked over a lot of the bushes. We looked over a lot of just all the things you look at when you have your vehicle in for service. Pretty sure I know which line is leaking Freon for the AC, so... Maybe in spring I can try and s slam a new line on there and get somebody to charge it up, see if it takes this time. As it's had a recurring problem of uh, every winter, for whatever reason, it just decides to evacuate all of its Freon. So that when I get the first hot day of summer, I blow, like, lukewarm air at my face. Oof. Yeah, it's, Quite I mean... from that, you'd want it for defrosting, uh, de-misting purposes, really. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, that's there's also that. Um But yeah, no, this entire summer has been spent driving with um I'll call it five forty air conditioning, five windows down at forty miles an hour. <laughs> um which I'm very, very glad for the cooler temperatures because of that. But other than that, no, nothing too new to report. The thing is still like carrying on like a pack mule. Anything I throw at it is just kinda like, okay, whatever. And the moral of the story is check your oil occasionally, kids. Yes, absolutely. I'd say if not every fill up, every other fill up. Just take a I second. Usually make a habit. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, usually make a habit of keeping uh, some napkins in the glove box. Like you go past a fast food place every now and again, or perhaps you've just got paper towel from home. And yeah, top up the car, top it all up. Check your fluids while you're there. It's Maybe just, we should do a show all about that. Yeah, just the, the what can every man do to make sure that things are still copacetic. Ooh, that's like a $5 word. I do like my Scrabble words, I do. You've got two hard C's and a soft C. 
Yeah. Oh, it does, doesn't so, it? So, yeah, I, I don't so have too much we... else to report. Um, I, I mean, I still look around and I dream shop for cars, but with the Forerunner being so solid, it's very, very hard to justify, especially also with payments and everything else and the prices of cars, very hard to justify looking at something different when that thing is just still so solid, even if it's not really appropriate for the the area. We'll get you fixed up soon. Uh, eventually, we'll get there. I still think. So, it's shall we move hilarious. on to some news? Yes. Sure, sure. All right. Um, I guess since I proposed it, I will go first. Okay. Let me pull up our browser. Make sure that you guys can also see what we're all doing the do here. And let me get your news story up, so. Yep. So. In our first episode, I highlighted a weird headlight-based heads-up display system from our friends at Ford, and I called it an answer to a question that no one was asking. This week, it looks like Ford is at it again. This time, answering a question <laughs> the automotive aftermarket has answered a dozen times before. Seatbelts for your dog. Okay. So they, I mean... They, I have. Why does the dog look so depressed? It really it's does sad. look very sad. <laughs> That's like that's not yay. We're going to the park. That's oh, we're going to the vet. Oh, we go to the vet. <laughs> <laughs> like, could they? But I love how they the also styled not... a very specific Ford-looking shifter down there. Everything else is pretty normal and bland, yeah. but that Ford shifter is real iconic. Oh yeah, looks like a Bronco Sport. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Check out the front window kink. Yeah, you're not wrong. Yep. Yeah, or it could be an F series. Yeah, the Super Duties have those too, but not not so subtle as that one is. Built yeah. Ford rough. But yeah, I mean, it's it's a great idea because, you know, when you have your pets in the car, it's important to keep them restrained and safe, but there's already systems out there probably for cheaper than you could option anything that they offered from the factory that plugs into the existing seatbelt buckles or goes to the seat back or something. So why they chose to patent this, I don't know. Uh, it, it does look like nice. Sorry, go on. I was, I was it, from that image there. It does look like they have included a provision to plug it into the harness so that you can maybe work with the pre-tensioning system. Yeah, that's what it looks like. like if you're going to be hitting the brakes too hard, it can actually sense that and pull a stop yeah. on it, so you're not getting jerked too hard. Yeah, yeah. I read the. the um... I read the application and it looks looks to be like they're interested in using the pretension as to avoid uh, your dog going flying in the case of an accident. Which I can appreciate, of course. We're all yes, animal sir. lovers here. But anybody I mean, who's ever ridden in a car with the dog in the back seat, they know that their dog is going to become hopelessly tangled up in both those tethers. So will it work? Will yeah, it cause more harm than do... good? That's exactly my point. Is it going to do worse than is good? Who knows? Well, that's a remains to be seen thing. I'm going to be interested to see if this thing makes it out of the patent stage, what happens when we put it through some live exercises. Well, it's going to make the crash test dummy videos hilarious. Oh, 100%. I am looking forward to watching those. I think it's kind uh, of hilarious how it uses the Isofix system, which you'd normally use for child, uh, child restraints. So yeah, which for your fur babies instead of your real babies. Oh God, don't get me started. <laughs> 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 the article does go on to say that they're not sure if it will make it into production, but that Ford is known for just blasting out patent applications. And if that's the case, I hope they're not just doing it to get a patent on file so they can slam the door on anyone who designs something similar. That mm, uh, might be a little bit of it, but who knows? We'll see what they do. So that's all I had. Who's at least a little cooperative when it comes to uh, third-party licensure of patents. So that's something. Well, uh, I can go next on news if there's no argument. Yep, the sure. floor is yours. All right. Well, uh, since we're speaking on patents and things of the like, uh, and a bit of a silly one, guess what's coming back? <laughs> Probably, but not really. Coming? They oh, have no. filed for a trademark on the nameplate. Now, oh, boy. they do this for any number of reasons. Of course, they may just do that so that it keeps that out of everybody else's hands. Nobody else can touch my thing. It's my thing. 
Uh, the same thing, they did the same thing for the Chevrolet Cheyenne. They've done it for, you know, the EXT Cadillac. Uh, the Volkswagen Amarok. Volkswagen did that for them. I mean, they, they could just be filing this just to keep it for the namesake of keeping it. And especially when you look at Chevrolet's lineup, how many small cars are they producing now? And you think they're really... Barely I mean, any. Exactly. I don't even know if they're actively producing the Cobalt anymore, which was the Cavalier's replacement. So... Is it funny to think about the Cavalier coming back? Yeah, because it's a it's a '90s namesake. It's an icon from back in the day, and who doesn't love a small car? But well, we Americans, love, well, yeah, Americans. But I mean, amongst oh. us and amongst a lot of other car enthusiasts, I mean, you you kind of do gotta love a little tiny four banger that you can sort of whip around. But is it something actually going to happen with this nameplate? Probably not. I'm just glad to see they're not bringing it back as a crossover SUV that they just slapped an old name badge on that everyone recognizes. Well, see, that's the problem. I was about to say, is, maybe they are. I was say they've gotten the name. They haven't said anything about what it's going to be. I'm specifically looking at you, Mitsubishi. That is not an Eclipse. No, it is not. That's okay. They put cross on it. Uh, uh, because they know it's going to make you angry. Uh, yeah. Triggered. <laughs> but Eclipse cross. on the flip side of that, of course, Acura did trademark, as, they, as it shows there, they trademarked the Integra Type S nameplate in August 2021. We haven't seen the Type S yet, but the Integra is back. So maybe there's some future planning there. Maybe it's just... Uh, you know, keeping a hold on the tab of Cavalier is ours, but well, we'll see. We'll see. It was kind of a funny one. I'm just like, ah, that's a blast from the past. I really wish we got the tag here. No tags in Australia for those in uh, playing at home. This is a uh, yeah, a bit disappointing. We only get one trim level of Civic now, and it's made in Japan and costs an arm and a leg. But it is made in Japan, so there is that. Oh well, yeah. To start, uh, Kaji, you want to go into your story next year? Yes, please pop it up. <laughs> Going now. Okay, Ooh. so uh, Rivian and Mercedes-Benz are working together on building large vans. Interesting, because, I mean, yeah, Mercedes is known for the Sprinter. Yes, that was like one uh, of which the first modern contractor vans. Absolutely, and uh, one of the few ones to uh, make market penetration in the United States. Um, very common in Europe, well, very common in the rest of the world, really. Like a, a desirable van in the rest of the world is often a Mercedes-Benz. Um, so to see them working together with Rivian, which probably means that we'll be seeing uh, Rivian badged ones in the United States taking advantage of the exciting new badge um, is really cool. And I think it's... Important for electric manufacturers, apart from that five-letter word, uh, getting on board with other manufacturers uh, who are more established, if they're not established themselves. Um, for instance, Hyundai Kia obviously can get away with just building electric vehicles because they build God knows how many cars. Um, they've got no problems with platforms or underpinnings. Um, but Rivian, of course, being, you know, they've got the one platform, just the truck, uh, being able to expand into other commercial style vehicles, I think is going to do them really well. Yeah, and, and we got the Sprinter van as a Mercedes, a Dodge, a Freightliner, and I feel like I'm missing one. Yeah, I think it went Freightliner after uh, the Dodge group said, oh, wait, no, we've got Fiat, and then... The Ram van is essentially, um, Kaji, what is the Ram van here? It's, it's a Fiat the, Ducato. Yeah. Which? The Promaster's a Ducato City, and yeah. the Loadmaster's the uh, other one, yeah. Promaster, not those... a bad van, unless you've got the separator inside, and then you're practically sitting on top of the freaking gas pedal. Ask me how I know. <laughs> yeah. And then we've got those hideous Nissan monstrosities. I like those. They're dumb. <laughs> they are dumb, and you know what? They make great platforms for, like, stealth um, domiciles, essentially. You can do stealth vans. Oh, like a tiny um, home type thing? Yeah, like tiny camper vans, like stealthy. They're great for that. If even from the smallest ones up to the big, gigantic things. 
I want to see them as uh, divvy vans in the US. I reckon that'd be sweet because they'd get moving pretty quickly. But unfortunately, they're on the chopping blocks, so. Yeah, well, um, yeah. Didn't think they were going to be too long for this world, unfortunately. Unfortunately. I mean, who That's doesn't want cool. a big V8 van? Yeah, those good old E-Series vans. Oh, yes. <laughs> Bring back those dinosaurs. <laughs> Uh, one of hey, my co-workers actually has a Chevy Express that he drives into work. A conversion van. It's in brown with metallic orange stripes. Oh, wow. Okay. It's great. <laughs> well, how about we move on to our feature segment? I reckon. Let's. All right. So, this week, used car listings. Specifically, private party listings. Used car dealerships, don't you worry, we'll get to you. Oh, yes. Your it time is, is an absolute, coming. It is an absolute jungle out there. Everything from genuine diamonds in the rough to complete dumpster fires that someone's trying to unload so they don't have to deal with it anymore. Sometimes they're easy to spot, and sometimes shady sellers will just try and cover up issues and leave you holding the bag while they're laughing all the way to the bank. But how do we tell the difference between the sketchy and the honest? Take a look, shall we? So who's up? So, do you want to do one of yours first, Tamarack? Well, before we get into it, let's just go around and talk about the things that either throw up a red flag and make you run away screaming or perk your ears up and make you want to give it a sniff. Okay, it's fair. So I guess red flags for me when I'm looking through a used car ad is vague or incomplete information. Mm-hmm. Lack of good quality pictures. We'll get the worst. That. Uh, bad spelling and grammar. Uh, um, a selling price that's either way over or way under the car's blue book value. That's reason to be suspicious. Always look that up. Um, hostile language, like don't waste my time. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, th things like exactly. that. One of the ones that really throws me off sometimes is willing to trade, especially if it's for something obscure that's not automotive related. Like, yeah, I'll trade this vehicle for a trampoline. Like, huh? No, 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 no. A fishing boat or a yeah. sport bike? Like, those things like, How about we trade it for some money and you <laughs> yeah. use the money and go and get a thing? <laughs> uh, the other one is... Uh, transaction on paper. Yeah. That also tells me this is this isn't something that they either were previously relying on, or it's it, it was something that was sitting off to the side, because they don't need it. If they're willing to trade a boat for it, they don't need it, and that means who knows what shape it's in. Does it run every day? Did it run every month? Have they not started it in a year? I don't know, and I don't trust it. <laughs> My favorite one is when they say they'll trade it for a car that's registered, and you're like, "Oh, oh, no. oh see, that's 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 not a pr that's, that's not a uniquely problem Australian so too." <laughs> yeah, because the here the registration doesn't stick to the car. Yes, over <laughs> here it does. And sometimes you'll get people who are just like, "Oh, I've got this car, which is a special thing. I'll trade it for any car with ro roadworthy," and you're like, "Oh, fuck, that must be terrible." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, this guy is trying to trade somebody a track car that can't go on the road for something that he can drive every day. Yeah. The amount yeah, of the other totally one... illegal advertisements you see where it's just like, this car has no tags, and you're like, you know that's illegal to even sell. Yeah, oh, I yeah the other imagine. one, assuming you, assuming you get good pictures, is lots of damage, interior, exterior, whatever it may be, that just looks like complete neglect. Yeah, if you don't at least take the time to make it presentable, or try, come on. Yeah. So, the green lights are pretty much everything opposite of that, which would be lots of clear, well-lit pictures from every angle inside and out. Uh, details with mileage, how long they've owned it, service history, present issues that may need addressing. That's a good sign mm -hmm. of honesty. Being honest about the flaws. Yes. And like you had said, if someone's willing to take the time to present it well, it's probably a good indicator that they took good care of it. Mm -hmm. um, my or at the very first... least, that they're... Sorry, go, you go on. Oh, no, sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say, or at the very least, show you, uh, show you its honest side. Like, dirt hides damage. This is a big thing, guys. Dirt hides damage, too. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. 
Especially if you got uh, particularly colored cars. Yep. Dirt hides Silver damage on white. white vehicles very well. Mm, silver also and, and uh -huh. if you've got muted colors dirt can fade it in so if you've got like a, a pastel blue or even a bright blue for instance um between a blue sky and some brown dirt you can actually hide an awful lot of paint damage you can even hide dents so a clean car is what you want to see yep and sometimes some paint damage can be a good sign like if it's got a lot of uh like sand rock chip damage on the nose area that car probably spent a lot of time on the highway it also hasn't been repaired up there mm -hmm. that as well yeah be be wary of spotless front ends oh yeah <laughs> i'm gonna uh, play the fifth on that one go ahead <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, my first example was a prime example. It was only two pictures of half of the car. And it was just listed as 07 Mercedes for $3,000. No model. And that's way too cheap from a, for an 07 Mercedes of any kind. I would say so. And no details whatsoever. Um, all he said was too many gadgets to list. <laughs> And nice. the guy just came across as an asshole. He said, you know, text only, emails will go unread, uh, mention of PayPal, I'll block you immediately. Just very hostile. He seemed like an asshole, but by the time the show rolled around, the ad was taken down. Unfortunate. I got screenshots of the two that I'm worried about simply because I was worried about them being taken down. The third one is just a listing. It'll stay there. It's just not a good ad. Yeah, I've got a quite a few to choose from here of varying different examples with varying different problems. So we'll see how much we can fit in here. Yeah, well, Kaji, you want to kick us off then? Sure thing. You want to bring up my first for me? Uh, let me scroll up to where you're at. <laughs> Oh, here we go. Um, yeah, I'm going to list them in two categories. Yo and no. Let's go with the first no. <laughs> the first no. And those. Say it correctly. Uh, I don't see any links okay. for your no's. No, there's two screenshots and a third link. Hang on. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. I see now. I see now. I see now. Yeah. The, the screenshots I was worried about. The so, problem with the screenshots is... Uh, uh, they're the sort of people who will delete and re-add an ad, so I was worried about the ad being disappearing. So. Yeah, understood there. Uh, so what I'll do is, and just for some background, you guys won't see it because I have to save it as a, a picture, and then I'll bring it up on the stream. Like yeah, right yeah, now. Yeah. So go no ahead. Uh, it's the Holden. Yes. Okay, so notice that the, that is the entire description, that <laughs> two lines there. Where he says some battle damage, no reg, no uh, roadworthy as is, need to sell. Um, if someone says as is and the car is in the weeds, <laughs> you better be you better be banking on a project, and I mean a project project. Uh, you can see by the color of the car that it hasn't been washed in ages. The front bar is coming off. There's uh, actually some dints on the other side, which I wanted to grab a screenshot of, but yeah, that ad is gone. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm so also looking at it. The front tire it. is sunk down into the earth. Uh, just mm -hmm. looking at it, engine size one liter. Doubt that. Um, <laughs> yep. Not also to mention, driven 375,000 kilometers. Yes. Not to mention, look what it's called. For those living in uh, other countries, that is not a barina. That's a Commodore. <laughs> so oh, it's I, I that the looked weird. Thing. Yeah, that was kind of an odd one. Yes, so it might be a Commodore Berliner, but if they can't be bothered to look at the name badge on the boot, then uh, I can't be bothered buying a car off them. Yeah, I'll give that one a miss. Yeah, that's going to be a swing yeah. and a miss for them. Mm -hmm. Got the next so one. What was your... Next one up? Yes, please. There we go. That would be... Looks like a Toyota. 
That is a Toyota Camry. Uh, it scrolled down a little bit because I needed to uh, get the whole condition thing in. Yep. Okay, so uh, first red flag is he says, mint condition minor scratches, but uh, the front bar's out of alignment. And the yeah, bonnet well, is out of alignment. Mint condition minor scratches. Those things are mutually exclusive. Exactly. So there's your hint that you need to look closer. If someone says that something is in mint condition, look closely because this person is lying. If you look at the panel gap at the front versus the panel gap at the back of the bonnet, that's not normal. That bonnet's out of alignment, which means it's probably had a hit. And the front bar is not lined up with the wheel arch, which again, that's a hit in the front. This mm -hmm. car's been repaired. The front door is a different color from the back door. Again, that's damage, serious damage. This person is lying. Run for the hills. Especially considering they're saying they're leaving the country and won't be coming back. Yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> I'm gonna dump this problem on you and you won't be able to contact me for nothing. Yep. But yeah, uh, if well, you see, actually that's uh, an interesting question. In Australia, if someone sells you a complete pile of misrepresented garbage, do you have any legal recourse? Oh, yeah, you can sue them. And it's not actually terribly expensive to do so here. Uh, but realistically, it's a hassle you don't want to have. No. Yeah, so if, if you can if possibly you see a vehicle avoid it. like this, yeah. Oh, um, hint number one, that the car's actually had a hit in the front. If you're not really all that mechanically inclined, uh, you'll see that number plate, right? Yep. You'll see how bent up it is, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> Looks like my oh, front yeah. number plate. <laughs> That's been straightened out. <laughs> if you see a number plate like that, start looking closely at the front end because very likely the car's had a, a front end hit at some time. Now, if this person had said the vehicle has been in an accident but has been repaired and is safe, they are being stories. This yeah. person, on the other hand, has said the car is in, in mint, mint condition. condition. They are lying through their teeth. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> yeah, don't go near that one. So what else have Especially we got in this grab grand. bag? God. Okay, so the third one is an ad on Marketplace for Going an there RX-8. Now. Oh, the RX-8, a Dorito. Yes. Now, he goes up for oh. sale or spot for a nice family car of some sort. Notice the nice. The first picture is nice. I'm assuming that's when he got the car. No, I'm looking well, at one the of those in the, the second, weeds. The first one I'm seeing, it's in the grass. <laughs> The first picture that he had up previously was the car when he got it sitting on some alloys. Looks really nice. Second one is on ridiculous drift steelies and parked in some weeds. And he's taken out the stock grill and put in some ricer mesh. Yep. That's but what I'm saying there. The part about this is if you read the text, there's so, so many red flags. One is the car started overheating due, due to coolant getting into the spark plug inlet. That's not how that works. No, it's and not. And it sounds a lot to me like he's just overheated the car and kept driving it and doesn't really know what's up. Compression has compression just... are very good. Uh-huh. Okay, yeah, I bet. Yeah, believe I believe it. It's been sitting for a year, despite the fact that apparently the problems that it's got are minor. I love 18 inch steelies. I'm sure he did steely them. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, no, he stole the idea. Yeah. Regretful sale. So uh, yeah, regretful sale. All right. That's why it's sitting in the weeds. I believe it. Yeah, but my favorite this car parts, is very loved. Yeah. Um, my favorite part's down the bottom. Give me a message if you're interested. No dickheads or you will be blocked and ignored. Only genuine interests. A little aggressive right. there. Okay. there. There's the hostile language for you. Yes, yeah, don't go near it. Oh, but look, yeah, well, I like the fact look that... at the Hoon sticker right on the center armrest. Yeah, that alone yep. should tell you, ooh, kind of beware a little bit. Yeah, or at least know of... what you're getting into. Beware of he's covered up. Yeah, he's covered up the uh, top glove box lid with stickers also. Yeah, I see it up there. Uh, Was that a cracked yeah, windscreen just... I saw as well? Uh, yeah, it looks no, like it. Although uh, windscreens... Maybe. Oh, that could I just be the other car behind it. Yeah, but also, I mean, if you look at the carpet, there's junk all in the carpet, and this is when it was supposed to be nice. Yep. And this is, yeah, like, what gets me about this is, like, he's used the previous seller's photos. There's no way those are his photos. 
No. Um, no. From when he bought the damn thing. Yeah, this is this is it's it's a grab bag of things to avoid. Yeah, so we'll give that one a miss. That is a the very, very... Things. I am not even... Uh, honestly, just by the first picture that I brought up there, I'm skipping this one big time. I'm already... My favorite part. No dodgy problem. on rotaries, but this definitely makes me go, I, I don't want to inherit this. Well, anytime Quite someone can't even be bothered to pull the car out of the... Oh, I know. Swamp God, that drag it's it in. Just pull it out Not into a clear mention. area, give it a quick wash, and then take some pictures. Hmm. It's not that hard. It'll at least be better no, than what you've not. done so far. The worst part is uh, your big hint that he's overheated it, by the way, and he's like, the car's started overheated due to, due to cool and getting blah, 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 blah. He's put a new radiator in it to try and solve the problem and then kept driving it, apparently. Hmm. Just make it cooler. It'll be fine. Yeah, yeah, totes. It's That's, it's, that'll solve the problem. Anyway. Something, yeah, something, band-aid, broken leg. Oh, yes. Yeah. Shutting the door after the horse is bolted. <laughs> so next up. Right. Um, do we want to go over on to and just do our nose and yos uh, per person? Or do we want to yeah, do all the nose and then go to the yos? Okay. So I'm going to go for... Mm -hmm. Let's see, probably one of my first and most notable no's. And it's not even necessarily that it's a bad car. It's just a bad listing. <laughs> 01 Chevy Tahoe, by all, it's a Vortec V8. It's going to be bulletproof, 209,000 miles. But look at how much detail you have. One, at least you have an, a proper <laughs> price on it. But two of the pictures are from the same angle, and they're all far away. Every picture is from far away. They've used vertical photos. Ver yeah, you can site. see them. Photos horizontal. Yeah, you can like, see he's using vertical photos far away, no interior detail. What's the detail in the car itself? Year, make, model, mileage, good condition. What does that mean? I don't know. $5,000. <laughs> well, hey, credit where it's due. At least he didn't stick his thumb in the photo to cover up his license plate because that matters to anybody. Yeah, that's true. No, I will give him that. You can see his shadow. <laughs> yeah. Right there, that one. <laughs> Tilt your phone over. Take your photos horizontally. All the websites want your photos horizontal, people. If you're selling a car, make sure it fills the frame and just does so horizontally. Yes. And Don't also... Don't touch angle your photos. Don't do your photos vertical. No Instagram filters. Don't shoot from the ground. Just take photos. And yeah. golden hour, people. Golden hour. Yeah, that, believe me. There's there's a first thing in the morning or just as you're getting twilight at night. That's your times. Uh, similarly... Make sure you've got enough light, though. Same kind of thing. You know what? It's it's kind of a cool van. But... It is. Like, we've got your basic information up there. Pictures are much better this time around. We've actually got, like... They're showing off, like, yep, we got clamshell doors on the side. They both open, which is a thing here in Illinois... That after a certain <laughs> amount of time, that second clamshell may not open just because it's a rusted shut. I was going to take the piss out of him for saying extended cab, but then I saw that sighting. I'm like, okay, never mind. Yeah, it actually is very much extended. It's a very extended. big, long van. Uh, but the, just the amount of information on it, again, like especially something that's from 1989. I want more than under 100,000 miles extended cab Ram van. Does it run? Does it need tires? Does it need brake? Like, what? what is the overall condition of this thing? I have no that, idea. Oh, it probably needs tires. Look at the color of them. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're probably that dry still, rotted. That still might be enough for me to at least call him up and ask some questions. Yeah. But you could avoid a lot of that just by providing good information in your advertisement. Absolutely. Yes. Uh, if you're a seller, you want to provide information here to stop the stupid questions on phone calls. Yeah, because you're just going to get frustrated with people asking the same questions over and over and over again when you could just take the five minutes to write the basics down. Like, yeah, and literally I the first thing I would be asking if I called would be, do you have the seats for this? Uh, does the heat work? Does the air conditioning work? Was it ever fitted with air conditioning? Does the stereo work? What's the interior like? When's uh, the last time it was serviced? An oil change? Anything? Yeah. Has it been used daily or has it been sitting? Like, 
it's just silly. You, yeah. you could avoid so many questions. And then just another one. This one is going to be kind of the inverse. We get a lot more information. Oh, they, scribbled, they scribbled out the plate. Yeah, God for one, did. anyone knows our plate number. That's dumb. For one, that's dumb. We'll get to the pictures in a second. But the actual information itself is nice. Great running and clean. 07 Taurus SE, 45,000 original miles. Here's some options that it has. It has ice cold AC and heat, good tires, all new brakes. It's telling me, okay, this person has at least kept this thing up a little bit. It, can Minor I hail damage. for a second? Yeah. If you're writing an advertisement, avoid exclamation marks. That's Please. it's silly. You're not a car salesman, yeah. You're you're not on Steelership Row. It's okay. You can just give the information without sounding like you're a zealot. It's okay. Really. I love Leah. I love the fact that they're going for the projected voice in text. Like, come on, man. Yeah, trying. Why as are much you they yelling can. at me? But here's where the pictures actually fall short. Now they did good. One, yes, they scribbled that out. That was dumb. Don't do that. They actually did take pictures of the hail damage that's on their hood. Like yeah, they're being yep, that's good. honest about it. But now this is what we get. Oh, bad framing. Not stay the car. Uh, Zoom with your feet, my friend. Okay. <laughs> Like you're, very I don't know what specific. happened to your pictures, but did it auto crop them or something? I it, don't know. It might have, but that's the thing. You have to check after you post it. Check your listing, see how it looks. If you were gonna try and buy a car, hey, does this look legit? Does this look good? Is this gonna sell my car? Yeah. I mean, if I were looking for a runner, I would probably still go and check this out. Because, I mean, they show oh, it. It's oh. running. There's no that, lights on the dash. Yeah, that image right there. Always look for that when you are shopping for a car. Uh, look at the dash. Make see sure the it's engine, running. Yeah, see that the engine is running and see if there's any warning indicators up. If I can it's tell you a lot. 1990, about 1992 or later, that's the photo you want. Like it may be a door or jar light is acceptable, but uh, if you can have it running with no warning lamps and you're intending on driving it every day, that's the way to go. Mm -hmm. And this, even given the bad pictures, this is still, this made it almost to my meh category. It's still not great because of the pictures, but it's, it's teetering on that meh category where it's like, yeah, if I were really looking for something, I would ring them up and I'd say, all right, let me come and test drive this thing and make sure the wheels aren't going to fall off. Also, but, it's between oh, you, those me pictures. And, uh, you guys here, like, people, if you're in the US, stop sleeping on these. Yes, they're boring. They're so boring. But it doesn't matter because they're cheap and they'll keep running until the end of time as long as you keep them up. For love of God, stop sleeping on these. Oh, oh yeah. V6 sure. couches are fine. Oh, absolutely. I hate them, but they're fine. <laughs> If you need hey, a car and you just need something that'll do the do, these things will do that. I can yes. attest to the benefits of driving a V6 couch. Yes, you can. There's lots of parts. They're pretty easy to look after. Sure, they're not the cheapest on fuel, but they're cheaper on maintenance. They're cheaper on insurance. Like, eh, car expenses, it's more than one thing. If you're looking at having a payment or you're looking at buying one of these with your savings or maybe after you sell that PS5 on eBay for too much money, go for it. Yeah. Yeah. This is this a safe is bet. This a payment. Yeah. Oh, all day. You're going to put like less into this thing in maintenance take... than you will for a payment. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I also do appreciate when people take photos of the car with all the lights on so you can see that they all work. Yeah, no, that's it true. Did, didn't yeah. even think about that one. Like, yeah, okay, it does have taillights. Good. Because I see a lot of cars rolling around here that only have a third brake light. No stopping at Napa on the way home. Yeah, no. But I like that. Napa. It's okay. You can stop there for an air freshener instead of $25 worth of light globes. Yeah, give me my black <laughs> ice tree, dang it. <laughs> ah. This is Get why we're free friends. Pack and open them all, at once. <laughs> all the way at once. <laughs> is there yeah, any other way but all the way? Open that door after a hot summer's get blasted in the face by cologne. <laughs> just black ice. <laughs> Blam! Oh, God. Oh. The first fursuit spray I bought actually black ice first. <laughs> 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 Smell like a taxi. That's awesome. 
<laughs> All right. Moving on, Tim, which feature do you want up? Well, I already, uh, I had to verbally tell you about my first one. That was a real gem. I wish that had stayed up. But uh, yeah. look at my number two. I titled this one in I'm my notes. I'm not a doctor. You, you what? <laughs> I'm not a doctor. No, no, not that one. Not that one. Not this one? <laughs> no, not that Ooh. one. Oh, I'm sorry. It would be my number one. Okay, that... feature number one then. Oh. We'll, we'll get to the TDI. Don't worry, Kaji. Paste and go. So here we have oh, a picture no. of three quarters of the car. Um, That's awful. Everything about that is awful. <laughs> but with a nice suede that interior, and that's the he lists nice suede interior, and that's and the then takes a picture, picture that you get at night. Like the night. <laughs> Sideways. Oh my god. But oh I mean, putting it up with. Thinking about selling my IS three hundred. Well, are you trying to sell it or not? Make up That's your mind. That's cool. Can I buy it? <laughs> <laughs> it um, he tells you right up front that it's been modded, so he probably fancies himself a boy racer. Probably. I mean, it's an IS three hundred. Uh, of course they have. But I love the first thing. Uh, thinking about something. First off, car runs and drives great. First off, if you have to lead with that, what else are you holding back? It yeah, runs and drives sure. great. Just don't worry about. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Uh, 100 miles on brand new necks and tires around $900. Okay, nobody cares. That's your maintenance problem, not mine. Mm -hmm. Quite apart from that, 100 miles, so he's not going to drive it until you go pick it up? I don't think so. Yeah. Um, so, cons, needs a headlight bulb. Well, then why haven't you fixed that? Yeah, that's real uh, simple. Paint, paint chipping on the roof and trunk. Okay, fine, whatever. Whatever. Well, it needs a headlight bulb, which may not be a big deal unless it's HIDs. Yeah, HIDs can then get could, very expensive. That would get very yeah, expensive. Yeah, it could be as much as 80 bucks a side. Oh, easy. Yeah. Driver's power seat works sometimes. Easy fix, I'm sure. So right, does that mean there's just like <laughs> bare wires that are occasionally connecting the right way down there? Yeah, who knows? Am I about but to buy a, a fire sale? If, if it's an easy fix, he's sure. Why hasn't he fixed it? Yeah. Yeah. Problems so problems are mostly cosmetic. Okay. <laughs> I and I also it can't stand these people on Craigslist who try to bypass the posting rules and they write their phone number out like that with words to kind of bypass the systems that they have in place. Mm. It just shows mm. that you're a sketchy asshole. Yep, you don't want your communications recorded. And yep. admittedly, so, there is some oh, evidence to show that you can, they're like, I know whenever I've posted my full number on a couple of Craigslist ads in the past, and it's been the proper number where it can just be a link that will get scooped up by some bots from time to time, and you'll just get calls and calls and calls that aren't relative. So there's a part well, of that's that all, that. That's all we get anyway. Yeah. Um, now we can move on to the TDI. I titled this one, funny. at least he's honest. <laughs> oh. So this thing is a complete pile of shit, but it's a good example of a good car ad. The vehicle rescue. Okay, we're already starting out strong. Hmm. Yeah, but if I was really specifically looking for one of these, um, I'd go talk to him. Yeah, I mean, a, a TDI wagon in a five-speed, that's actually a f not exactly a very common setup. So, yeah, I mean, they're... No. Yeah, but he, he tells you what it is. He tells you that it's rusty. It's from Michigan. Um, it's Dirtier interior filthy. is gross. <laughs> and I love how honest he is. It's way too hot for me to detail it, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, but I, I, I don't like uh, that Rolls Coal is in the good. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> EGR delete. That's what it did. That's what did it. Ugh. The one that scares me is the ABS pump. Yeah, that's mm, brake warning light and beeps when driving. It beeps while driving. Oh, oh, that's bad. That's yeah, that's not a good sign. But he included plentiful pictures that show the whole car and all of its flaws. Oh yeah, that's some rest. The thing is, sometimes you want a bad car you want something that you're going to be doing up you don't necessarily mind if it's bad so long as you know what's bad 
this is a good ad to buy a bad car from. Yeah. Yeah. Well, or this is just, a beater with a heater. Want, yeah. You just want a winter beater. Yeah. I don't care That's if I, I mean. crash this thing in the snow. Mm. I'll just leave it there and it becomes, you know, IDOT's problem. Can we go back to the previous one more? Holy Jesus. Oh, it's filthy. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's gross. But, you know, How I'm not saying that, that I would work in. Oh, who knows? I can, I'm sure it has a smell. I can smell it from here. Yeah. Especially but I mean, with having sure... been so hot out, I know what that smells like in the summer. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I, I, I would definitely not, not. I would definitely not buy this car. But it's a good example of a good ad for a bad car. How yeah, do you have awesome. oil on the timing cover? I don't. Uh, diesel, oil everywhere. Yeah, it's fair. <laughs> it's a diesel. Yeah, it's this. Uh, oil is the fuel. You might get a couple of adding lightness out of that. It's nature adding lightness. <laughs> if you're a good welder, you could get a little bit longer. Yep. Um, yeah. Uh, the other good one uh, would, I think, be my number three. This this was actually a good car that I might go check out in spite of the bad grammar. Accord 04, 3600. A fair price. Yep. But I, some of the language in here kills me. I am selling my red Honda to Accord 2004 because I don't want to have two cars. Fair. Yep. I have another Honda CRV and decided to sail the Accord. I am asking $3,600 for it. The car okay. has four cylinder. He is in condition and running perfect. See that what that tells me right there? The fact that they applied a, I don't know, I guess they, they gendered the car. A yeah, gendered term. That speaks to me that this person probably, yeah, is uh, either not a native English speaker or Spanish speaker because they're, yeah, they're, they're gendering. Yeah. Um, uh, either Spanish or French. Uh, if you're in an area near uh, the Quebecois in Canada, you'll find it. If you're in areas, well, obviously in the US, uh, Spanish speakers everywhere. So, yeah. Yeah, but... I, judging by the pictures and the description, I might go talk to this guy. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, just based on the description so far, uh, I mean, the car looks pretty good. I'm seeing a little bit of maybe a, that's just the lighting, but slight difference between those two panels, but probably just lighting. It looks again, like lighting to me. Yeah. It's not a bad color. It's very, it's, it's, it's like nice and clean, so clean you can actually get car. a look at the damn thing. Interior is good. That's nice. Well, I, mean, I don't see anything there that I'm afraid of. Spotless. Yeah. And notice that the engine was running in that photo. Yes. Um, the yep, interior sure also is clean without having been cleaned. That's yeah. That's a real bonus. And you can definitely tell that, okay, yeah, they've they've had a little bit of, you know, the shoe wear in right there. And it's just the natural places yeah. that you get from driving a car. Yeah, precisely. No, that's great. If if you see like that, those mats haven't been taken out and scrubbed, so that car is naturally this clean, which means that it's probably been looked after, which mm -hmm. is what you want. And Pretty... I used this description in the first episode, but that is a nice, honest engine bay. It's clean without being too clean. Yeah, without clean. being you can actually see everything slimy looking, kind of like it's got detailers slopped on it. But no, this is this is actually like those are the color of faded plastics. Yep, that's what you want. Two yep. photos. You can even see the belts. Yeah, spoiled. Yeah. So because we are running a little bit long and we have a couple more to get to, um, yep. just pop up my bonus image real quick because I found this in my search and I just want to appreciate this thing. <laughs> no, not that one. Not that one. Not that one. Oh, bonus <laughs> awesomeness. Yeah, the bonus awesomeness. Yes, 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 yes. Here we go. Oh, Lord. <laughs> good good gravy. I don't need much information on that. That pretty much speaks for itself. Yeah. That thing you is... don't buy that because it, it's a monstrosity. Yeah, no, you, you buy that as a project car, but you don't expect it to run great. You're buying something that is cool and will make it work after. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I just I look would, at this I would and wonder. I'd expecting not to have it work. Yeah, I like the tin can camper look. Like that's an yeah. interesting sort of a choice. It's just cool. 
It is. It's just sort of, uh, you can tell this person's an art kind of, but no, I get it. That's awesome. It's an interesting interpretation. Um, are you all familiar with Tin Can Campers? No. No. Okay. So they were called Tin Can Campers because, well, tinned food was fairly new and relatively inexpensive. So they'd leave large amounts of tin cans in places. Um, but a lot of early motorists, especially in states like Florida, where uh, the road system was in relatively good shape because no harsh winters, um, they would buy cheaper older cars and stick a box on the back. Um, so you just have a, a big wooden box camper type deal. And uh, yeah, called Tin Can Campers. This is like an interesting rat rod take on that. I like it. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah. So we move on to some of your yo's, Kaji? Yeah, for sure. All right, let's get to the goods. And that BMW that was going to be my third one, um, just sacrifice for the sake of time. That one, he was actually honest about the fact that he bought it as a salvage title. And it was re- and it was repaired, but it's reflected in the price. And it's hmm. a six-speed manual 335i. So Not uh, bad. Not can't bad. scoff at that. I would go look at it. Yeah. Even with the salvage title. Really? Anything you don't have to find the car facts to have a look at is a good deal. Now, this thing, would you mind expanding the description for me, please? Yes, yes. Thank you kindly. Boop. Okay, so now this person is understanding of the fact they're probably going to have enthusiasts be interested in it, so they've written everything out. Uh, Go through the photos for me. Now, they've mentioned the fact that they've had tint done. They've mentioned the fact that they've got the original keys, owner manual, and the logbook, um, complete with service history. They've pointed out the fact they've got some scratches going and they're missing a a hubcap and they've got a ding. But it's a fairly low mileage sort of a car. It's about 100,000 miles for those of you in Imperial places. And uh, yeah, you. they've got lots of good photos of all of the areas of the car. Um, in Australia, check engine lights aren't a thing on the car that old, by the way. So there's no need for that. Um, and yeah, they're showing you all the little stuff that everything works, that the whole area is clean. Um, they inform you that it's working correctly, that the front bumper's been replaced. That's Just telling. Everything you need to know. Surprisingly, like especially on Corollas, if this mm. area is clean... That's big. Yeah, everything's clean. Everything collects in there. That is like the yeah. weird like dust hole bin where everything just kind of goes in there and crap collects. The fact and that you there's never nothing in there. It, so you're never if you're not familiar. It. If you're not familiar with these cars, uh, those of you playing at home, this is directly next to the driver's seat. So getting in and out, everything goes in there. <laughs> That's where you find french fries and rocks and just dirt and coins dust. And, and, yeah, yeah, coins. It is a black yeah. hole in um, that car. But yeah, and the price is right. It's about $3,200 with a roadworthy, no less. Dude, um, I would jump a roadworthy on Roadworthy is essentially... Yeah, oh, go back to the boot well, because that one amazed me. Oh, Look yeah, that, yeah, that's, yeah. That's clean. The paint's not even faded in there. <laughs> Which tells me that this car has never had dust in there. It's never had dust, dust in there. There's no water lines, covers, so it's not leaking. All the seals are good for their yeah. trunk. Mm-hmm. It's. I guarantee you it doesn't smell like mold because it's, I mean, a lot of those did. Oh, yeah. What's really funny about this in particular is this is the same model of uh, Corolla that I took the piss out of the advertisement last week. <laughs> <laughs> nice callback. Yes. But yeah, no, Um, if, oh, you're, if you're in the car. market for one of those, that's what you want to see in an ad. Absolutely everything is told to you from the get-go. Yeah, I would I would jump on that. I would call them the same day I saw this if I were looking for one of these. Oh, absolutely. I'm surprised it's still up. All right. Let's Moving go on. to the next one. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. It's broken. Yep, it wants well, me to log in. Well, while you, while you work on fixing that, I will fill a little bit of time and i'm sure kaji will agree um um my number one pro tip oh no 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 the second link is dead the second link is dead oh that'll do it okay 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 let me just grab the third one let me pull 710's thing back up and get you guys looped back in yay 
No. I did not Yay. expect the technical anyway, difficulties. Tam, you can chat. Oh, oh yeah. no, I got this. Watch this. Number Bada one bang. tip, um, whether That's you're buying already. from a private seller or a dealership, once you've got a car you're really interested in, take it to an independent shop that you trust for a pre-purchase inspection. And if the seller won't allow that, don't walk, run. Yeah. Yes. If, if you're, you're afraid of a mechanic looking at it, no, 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 it's bad news. If you're in Australia, you can go with either a... Uh, you can go with uh, one of the various LMCT deal, uh, uh, operated workshops, which are the ones that can do roadworthies. Or you can go to an RACV accredited workshop, which is our local version of the AAA. <laughs> they, they actually accredit workshops that they trust to do pre-purchase inspections, and they cost a set fee. It's about 130 bucks. That's nice. Now, you might think... You might think 130 bucks is a lot to be spending on something you might not even buy, but trust me, it's a lot less than you'll be spending on a bad car if you buy it. Oh, very sure. true. Mm. So All that right. looks like a nice one of those. Yeah, your little Honda Civic. This is up. an enthusiast. This is an enthusiast listing. Clearly. Um, if you're after an enthusiast car, obviously you're after it for its performance credentials. This has got some good photos. If you'll scroll through, they're okay. Like they're not amazing, but they've got it from all the angles that matter. There's your golden hour. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. They've got it from the angles that matter and you can see what's important. Um, nice clean underbonnet, not covered in oil. There's no big dints up front or in back. The sides look good. This is ideally what you want to see, so you can see something hasn't got any major damage. You can see everything's aligned. Square on photos from the side like that are great for telling if there's misalignment or panel damage. Oh, yeah. And that interior, though. Spotless. It's very, very nice. That is very nice. <laughs> <laughs> and it's got its original steering wheel, which is a good thing. Uh, a lot of people, you can tell the difference between... An enthusiast, like an enthusiast enthusiast, and people who are a bit of a scene kid, I can generally tell by if it's got the original steering wheel or not. Because there's really no need to replace it. No. If you're replacing no. it, you're replacing it for one of two reasons. You're replacing it for fit or you're replacing it for looks. In my case, it's generally fit because, you know, kind of tall. My knees get in the way of a lot of these steering wheels. But if I'm selling the car, the original steering wheel will go back on. Now, um... If you have a look on the right, you've got a description of everything that's been done. All of it. Which is very, and very complete looking. It's nice. It's, mm -hmm. They list out, you know, the actual who made it. AEM, yep. High Flow Cat, they don't really say much about. Chipped ECU, well, a little bit of worry, but not too much. Yeah, looking at everything else what around I this really car. Like about it. What I really like about it is if you noticed have how many of the upgrade parts are OE parts or from another OE. Yes. Um, stuff that's made by an original equipment manufacturer will generally be of better quality than an aftermarket part. I hate to say it, but that's generally the way it is. So if you can find an upgrade, which is off a, another car by the same manufacturer, preferably, or off another OE car, that's the way to go. Well, and it also and bears saying that a lot of aftermarket parts are intended for motorsport and racing yes. and only intended to last for a couple of races. They're not meant to be used every day. So if you're yeah, going to be driving to be used this for a season, not 10 years. Yep. Right. So, yeah, like uh, this person has got some polyurethane mounts in the mix. But uh, apart from that, it's all nice OEM parts. Um, if you scroll down slightly. Just a little further. The fact down the bottom where it says test drives will be conducted by myself, that's not a bad thing. Honestly, a lot of these people are just looking to farm out people who aren't interested and just want to flog their car. <laughs> yes. If you show up with money, they will generally let you drive the car. But still, especially that something that's modified and unique... I would want to see how they drive it anyways. Yes. Absolutely. You can get a lot of information from how someone drives a car, and if they flog it, nah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you're granny riding the clutch, I want to know about that before I buy it. Absolutely. 
So let's Alrighty, see. Alrighty, that's my yos. I've got a really good get, one. We get the Yodios. Yodios. That actually sounds like a fun breakfast cereal. Okay. <laughs> so. Uh, I'm going to start off with, um, we'll call this an enthusiast. It's not quite as expensive or as thorough as the Civic, but I would call this enthusiast, and I think both of you are going to like this one because I like this one. Ooh. Oh, ah. yes. <laughs> this is American something that I, if I had the money, I would actually go and look at this because it's mm -hmm. cool. Um, I'm already out the door. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you've got... A lot of very honest, like, Volvo have a working AC, which is great. The engine was good, but leaky as all of those tend to be, being that it was a nice car. It actually gives you a little bit of a story to go along with it. And strip down a short block, prep and paint it. So he's done a lot of work to this. He's telling you about it. And the pictures are solid. I like the fact that he tells you what oil he's been using. So you've got an idea of the fact that he actually kept it up. Yeah, 15 and 15.40 in the summer and 5W40 in the winter. Or Rotella, which Rotella has all the extra vitamins and minerals in it that help engines be happy, especially old engines. Diesel engines specifically. Yep. But if you, by old. the way, if you're in the United States and you've got an older car, consider if you want to use a synthetic, go right ahead. But grab a zinc additive. It's about 12 bucks per change. It'll help uh, save wear on all your rotating parts. The last thing you want to do is wear through the hardening on your cams, believe me. Yeah, that's not good. No. But as far as the pictures go, he's showing all the different angles on the body. It's a very clean looking car on the body. It's pretty tidy. The interior it's a minor looks up great. The front, but that's actually pretty normal. Yeah. But the, the interior, interior looks nice. awesome for its age. Mm. Oh, get that water bottle out of there. Yeah, Damn that you. is mm, small minor. I'm right. okay with the water the back seat, though. I'm okay with the water bottle because it means it's probably not soft drink cups in the car. True. <laughs> Fair. Ah, uh, BBSs. Mm-hmm. And he took the time to put Volvo center caps in the BBS wheels. Yes. It's a nice low shot at the back so you can see it's not uh, too rusty. Yeah, you can see in here it just doesn't look super cancerous. You got a little bit of rust right there, but... I mean, it's an Illinois car. I hook some protected metal. It's going to happen. Yeah. Brand new exhaust as well. Very oh, honest. That's what Showing. you want. Like, yeah, okay, it's not perfect. Here's some issues. Also, there's a crack in the side here, that door card. Being honest. Showing you again in the boot. No real bad cancer anywhere to speak of. Nice shot of, I mean, not a great shot of the engine, but you can see belts. You can see that things have been taken care of. Obviously, those are new shiny looking bolts, so he's done some work to it. He painted the block. Boot lid is magnificent. Mm. Like, all in all, I'm not afraid to go and buy this car and think like, yeah, if I spend eight grand, I can have a daily driver out of this. Yeah, absolutely. So that's definitely it's cool. It is. It's cool. You've got a list of parts, things done recently, things that need to be addressed. Like there's, there's honesty there. And I would be much more prone to going and jumping at this one than I would for a lot of others. Uh, yeah, just for, because you've got a lot of information. Yes. Uh, for sake of time, I'll do one more real good yo. Mm -hmm. Then we'll be about done, I think. I think we'll be Another getting pretty close. So one more spoonful of, of yo-yos. This one, another local, ah. 7200. Xterra off-road. Again, I mean, yes, okay, we can see you in the picture, but oh well, who cares? That actually is kind of a credit to the paint more than anything else. The fact that I can see you in a black car's paint. For sure. <laughs> yes. But overall, solid pictures. Takes very, very good pictures of everything that's going on all around, getting to the interior. It's got the wear and tear that a truck will do. But all in all, it's, it's fairly clean. 
it's honest. The engine bay is honest. There's nothing missing. I got an aftermarket battery, but something that old is gonna. Yes. All the, the standard stock stuff is still in place. I'm not looking at any aftermarket boxes or cold air, nothing like that. And the description is good. I mean, they say clean Carfax, maintained, oil change, new tires... They do, the, the pet peeve I do have is they say, okay, everything's ready for you. And then the, another two sentences, everything is ready yeah. for the next driver. Everything is ready. Everything is like, just, it's okay. We got, we, you got it once. Overselling cool. it a bit. In it. Yeah. Yeah. Drop it in at the end. Don't uh, repeat stuff like that. Yeah. Now the one that I'm going to do, and I'm going to put this one up here. This is going to be a challenge. I want you guys to see if you can look at this and tell me why I got annoyed. <laughs> have you found it bucks. that's exactly it this annoys me worse than anything else when I'm looking at car ads is oh, the people yeah. who try and modify the price to be like oh it's $11 it's $35 no it's not just give me the price $3,500 just give me the price be honest give me the price don't try because I will see brand new cars for $300 no. Well, you know why they do that, right? It's they, finance. That's that's what you're doing down. But well, no, it's worse than that. What they they put that in there so that it um, shows up at the top of the listings when people sort by cheapest. Absolutely. Yeah. And you know, for it's it's frustrating because especially if you are somebody that's on a budget, because I've been here before. I have been that kid that I need to go into Craigslist and I need to find a car to drive because I got to get to work. My last one broke down. I need something to go. And mm. when you have to scroll through page upon page of like, yep, it's $11, only 300 down. And I can't afford, I don't have the amount, the, the ability to finance. So you're interrupting all the results of stuff that I actually need and want to see to try and push a car that I'll never be able to afford right now. It, Especially it, the buy here, pay here places. It's oh, they're a, so it's predatory. Really, really dodgy shit. Yeah, avoid those at all costs. Absolutely. Absolutely. So that's what I've got. And that's kind of the end of my list. That was just one of those things I saw. I came across that and was just like, oh, I felt my blood pressure rise a little bit. I got to talk about this. <laughs> got your gander up. <laughs> Sorry, got your dander up. I always get those mixed up. But anyway, yes. You um, try. I'd say that's probably a safe amount considering. Well, yeah, let's see. Yeah, we've got um, covered all the bases. Yeah, we've been on for hour and eighteen now, so I think we can start our uh -huh. wrap ups. If the host does so want to do that thing, of course. Yeah, well, I forgot to write myself a tidy little script, so I'm going to have to do this off of memory. But uh, yeah, thanks We're for doing watching. It live. We're doing it live. Um, we do this every week around the same time, so please join us here on Twitch, or if you're following us on YouTube, uh, please give us a like and a subscribe just to let us know we're doing a good job. Uh, you can find us on Twitter at uh, the710cast. You can also find us our, find our Discord server. Uh, links will all be in the description. Come and talk to us. Drop us an email. We'd love to answer your questions if you have any. And uh, next week, the Yodi will be taking over as host again. We've come back around full circle. So what will we be talking about next week? Next week, I'm not exactly sure which one I'm going to choose, but we have a couple of fun car challenges. Something where we're going to have to go out there in the world, local to us, and we need to, with a certain set of parameters, find a particular kind of car or a particular price range, something like that. So I'm going to find a real fun and interesting one for us to do so we can flex our car searching muscles a little bit. And uh, we'll see what we can come up with that looks interesting, fun, cool, or just plain wacky. And then a series of challenges. Oh, that's going to be later on then when we can actually get these things. Uh, that'll be real fun. But yeah, we'll, we'll see. We can make up some some fake challenges and, and just look at each other's cars and judge whether or not they would make it past or whether we would... You know, just crash and burn. All right. Well, um, we have to say our thank yous. Um, I'll start with the um, our friend of the show who made us our logo and background. If you'd like to show that lovely logo. Already up. 
Yep, it's by Yagoda. There's her information. Wonderful artist, wonderful person, good friend of the show. Amazing. And our music supplied by... Our music is Walking supplied dog. by the delightful Walking Dog Music. These, This is DMCA-free, copyright-free, tons and tons of albums of all different kinds, mostly lo-fi, good stuff to listen to, to study, to just hang out, to have it in the background of your coffee shop, whatever you want to do with it, it's good stuff. Worth noting, actually, a lot of people uh, don't seem to realize the legalities of music regarding coffee shops and stuff like that. So, uh, uh, although it's extremely unlikely you're going to get pinged for playing Spotify in the background, do keep it in mind. Technically not for broadcast. So stuff like this is a good option for adding ambience. And quite apart from that, unlike things like Spotify, you get to control it a little bit better. Yeah, you can kind of choose. I mean, you've got... This is their kind of Kawaii Future base. The Reaper album is a little bit more like some Halloween and Folly stuff. Like you can actually kind of curate what you want to be listening to. It's very cool. So I think that is a wrap for this week. Uh, please join us next week. And I think that's all for me. So good night. Good night. Good night, everybody. We'll see you next week for episode four. Bye.